Hi, my name's Rich Harrington, and welcome to another edition of Photoshop for Video, your weekly podcast on how to do more for video graphics using Adobe Photoshop. Today, we're going to look at a simple production technique. Now, I'm a big fan of using storyboards for pre-visualization. These are very helpful because they let you tell the story before you shoot a single frame of video. This is important because if your clients don't have a great sense of imagination, or you're working with some larger budgets, you're going to want to take this extra step to really plan things out. Now, a lot of people quickly sketch out storyboards just on pads of paper while sitting around maybe in a creative session or a production meeting. But how can you clean those up and really make them look good for the client? Well, here's how. We've got some sketches here that have come into the system, and I just want to show you how easy this is to clean up. Now, if you look in close here, you'll see that there's lots of little lines where these were sketched, and it's a little rough, and then they went back over and did a little more, and that's okay. We could fix this. The easiest thing here is to just simply do a levels adjustment. So with a levels adjustment, if you look at this, you'll see we have two spikes. This spike right here is things that are gray that should be black. So as we pull that slider in, you'll see some of your thinner lines are going to go ahead and get crisper. Now similarly, we have areas over here that are white or very light gray that we no longer want that way. So if we pull that slider in, those areas will start to get cleaned up. And notice how some of those bad lines or secondary lines actually disappear. So we could play with that and then reposition the middle slider here to taste to really help clean up those lines. And that works pretty well. So very quickly with that levels adjustment, we were able to get rid of large quantities of the problem. Here's the before, here's the after. Now, one of the other things that I'll often do is I'll simply say select all, copy merged, and then paste it on top. I'll then do a little bit of a blur on this, filter, blur, Gaussian blur to soften the lines up a bit, just pushing that a little. There we go and then run the levels adjustment on just that layer, pushing some lines blacker and some lines lighter. There we go. And what you can easily do is set that layer to multiply mode so it drops out the whites and those black lines just really help pop on top. Now at this point you have a nice simple cleaned up sketch. If you want to colorize it, piece of cake. What I recommend is targeting your work to layers. So on top here, we have this nice stroke, and in between here, we could just make a new layer. So if I add a new layer here and I start to paint, let's go ahead after the hair here. We get a smaller brush with the left bracket key, make sure I'm working in RGB mode so I can actually see my colors, and now we could start to paint. So I'm going to grab a nice gold for the woman's hair. There we go. Zoom in here just a little bit so we can see it, grab my paintbrush tool, and start to paint. Now I don't have to worry about staying inside of the lines because remember, we put a copy of the lines on top. So if we just paint this in here really quick, you could use a tablet or you could use your mouse, whatever you feel comfortable with. Notice as you start to paint in those lines how that works very well you might have to play with the size of your brush, but you don't have to worry about staying inside the lines as much. Because on the top layer, we have those overlays. So there we go, I've got that. I just quickly fill that in, coloring that in a bit. And because it's on its own layer, if I make a mistake, it's a piece of cake, just grab the eraser tool. We could erase that away a little bit. There we go. And that makes it easy. And there's those top lines laid on top. So because everything is controlled like that, it makes it really easy to go after things and fix it. If you don't want some of these lines in here, just select that and go ahead and erase them away. See, and you can control how this is being put together. If you need to, just go to a slightly softer brush. Shift left bracket is an easy way for that. And you can clean up those lines and very quickly get a colorized storyboard without a lot of work. Let's zoom out there for a second. You see that worked pretty well. Let's go ahead after the guy's shirt here and we'll just do that. I select that layer, grab the color that I need. Let's make it green. There we go. And I'm just going to get a nice big brush and paint that in. Make this easier on myself by zooming in. 
I'm on my color layer here. We'll just name that to make it easier. And we paint. Now remember, we don't have to go too much, we don't have to worry too much here. It's a piece of cake. Grab my brush tool, get a bigger brush, right bracket, and we just paint in. If at any point in time you need to, you can hold down the shift key to draw a straight line. So for example, hold down the shift key and click, and it draws a straight line playing connect the dots, which makes it much easier to fill these areas in without much work. Now that's outside of the frame there, so I won't worry about that. We'll eventually crop that away. But you see here, we can quickly paint this in. There we go. Filling in the colors that we need. Shift click to draw a straight line, fills it in nice and fast. There we go. And because we have control here, left bracket, smaller brush, we can get into those smaller areas as needed. See how easy that is? You don't have to worry about staying inside the lines because the lines are just laid on top. And that makes it really easy to preserve the detail. It's gonna take you a little bit of time here to clean these up, but not too bad. Much better than going out there and wasting time with a crew when you don't really have the client's approval for what you're trying to pull off. Quick sketch technique, quick color technique, and then all you're gonna do is crop these images out. Once they're cropped, you could drop them into PowerPoint or Keynote. In fact, Keynote on the Mac even has a storyboard template that looks fantastic and makes it easy for you to present your storyboards. Once you launch Keynote, if you scroll down, you'll actually see that there's a template called Storyboard. You could select that and click Choose. You could also specify the size that you need. And then it's a piece of cake. Depending upon how you want to apply the storyboard, Keynote will offer both a two panel. Depending upon what you want, Keynote gives you some choices. You can use a single large up display here and then grab your individual colorized document here. Here we go. And just drop that in and it's automatically sized and masked. We can add another page there, grab our next panel of storyboard. That works well. If you decide you want to show multiple images at a time, simply click master and go to something like the six up view. And with that, you can then drop in multiple shots. For example, here we could do this whole scene of progression here. One shot to there, to there, to there. And we continue the action as the story is told, laying it out for the client to see, giving our progression of shots. So very flexible, simply drop in the text for the individual scene, and it makes it really easy to present your storyboards to the client. Taking this extra level of care to present your work will help you land better projects and really make your clients happy with you. Photoshop is a great tool for putting this all together. And in fact, if you even just wanna bypass going ahead and scanning and sketching, you can go ahead and take advantage of things like this, for example which is just a tablet that you could use to sketch directly into Adobe Photoshop. So, however you wanna run this, Photoshop will be there to help you out. I hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Photoshop for Video. We've got a lot more tips on our website at photoshopforvideo.com, where you can check out the blog, back episodes of the podcast, and take a look at the book as well. Thanks again for joining us.